stand on God's promises because he reigns eternally amen amen our God reigns my God he reigns above every name no matter what's going on in our lives no matter what's going on in this world our God is above everything and we can always go to him are you glad that you can go to a savior like that amen and amen God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Come on, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name with power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion, Dominion and authority. authority. Come on, you, you reign. reign. We are declaring today. That we know he reigns with power and majesty, all dominion, my God, you reign. Oh, my God reigns, my God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns, Lord, you reign above every name. Lift your voice and say, my God reigns, my God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns, Lord, you reign. Love every night. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion all authority. authority. I'm so glad he reigns over all. With power and majesty. All dominion. Dominion Come on and say. Lift your voice and say. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God Lord, you reign above every name. Oh, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. With power and majesty. power and majesty. He holds the world in his hand. The one we serve with power. Dominion, my God, you reign. One more time, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. He is my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God, we serve. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Say over my circumstance. But because he reigns over my circumstance, circumstance you've given me, you reign. One more time, say over my circumstance, over my circumstance, you've given me another chance. You reign, you reign, you reign. 
is a surprise to you oh God we are thankful that you are our way maker thank you God Has anybody ever been in a situation that only God could get you out of? Thank you, God, that we are witnesses of your grace. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. We call him Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. That is who you are. Say it again. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. He's our God. That is who we say you are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. We're going to say it again. You are here, say turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. We worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Everybody, lift your voice and say, "Way maker."
is how and our redeemer he's our defender you are my righteousness that is who you are strong tower and my provider he's my protection oh god i thank you that is who you are everybody say baby girl One more time and we say we make miracle work about our way maker. You may be seated. All right, at this time, if we could have all the kids that are here to go ahead and go to the back to get their buckets and collect their children's offering. All the children that are here, go to the back to get your bucket, collect your offering, and then bring your buckets back to the front. done, go ahead and bring your bucket to the front, but we have some people right here. Look right there. We want to make sure that we're walking in the house of the Lord. Once you're done, go ahead and bring your buckets to the front and then have a seat. Once you're done, bring your buckets to the front and then have a seat. Everybody start making your way to the front. Right. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, bigger boys and girls. All right. I have a question to start off with. And you guys can raise your hand and answer. And if you all want to answer, you can raise your hands and answer as well. How many of you, while at home or wherever, have watched cartoons? I've watched a cartoon. And when you're watching your cartoon, are the cartoon characters this big on the screen or are they this big on the screen? They're this big on the screen? Okay. Well, today's children's story is about a cartoon that kind of came to life. There was a family who went to Disney World. Now, Anybody who is familiar with Disney World knows that there are characters 
that you typically would see on cartoons at home. And at home, the cartoon characters are typically about this big on the screen. However, as we sit and relax, however, at Disney, the characters became this big. Now, there was a family, and they were walking around Disney, and there was a lot of people, and these kids started to enjoy all of the things that were at Disney. And one of the kids started to walk away from where the family was because they wanted to see what there was to see. Now, the entire time while the child was walking away, Daddy was watching to make sure that his child never got too far away. But while the child got separated from the family, he turned to look back. But when he turned to look back, the mouse that he saw on TV that was typically this big turned out to be this big. And it scared him. So he ran really fast and he jumped into a playground, playhouse thing that was big enough for a kid, but not really big enough for an adult. And he would not come out because he was so terrified of this big mouse who on his TV looked this big. And they tried to get him out, but he wouldn't come out. So then Daddy, who was watching the entire time, he got down on his knees. And again, this playhouse was designed for children. However, Daddy got down, even though Daddy was bigger, and he funneled his way inside, and then he got to his son, and he talked to him and told him that no matter what there is in this world that is scary to you, I won't ever leave you, and I'll go anywhere to save you. Now, this is very much like our Father in heaven. No matter how far we get from God, or where we find ourselves intertwined, God will always come to get us because he's always watching and he knows exactly where we are, okay? All right, you guys come up and let's pray. All right, so we're going to all pray together. You guys repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for always watching over us and for always taking care of us and for not being afraid to come to the dangerous places that we go. Help us to always look for you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys have a blessed day. that's sitting in the audience that decided not to join us on stage. That's Naja. <laughs> um, this morning, um, we're going to be uh, reading the scripture. Um, would you please stand? Um, the scripture is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. And I will be reading from the um, New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul. 
chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fill his own good, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united in Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. May God add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his word. Amen. with one another with you in our presence. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you again for being with us throughout this week, blessing us throughout this week, and keeping us. We ask that you continue to look upon those who are on the way and haven't, have not yet made it. Give them safe traveling mercies. We ask those that you bless those who are sick and shut in who aren't able to make it. We ask that you continue to bless those that are visiting us via internet or um, audio, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to bless each and every one of us as we need it, health, finance, relationship, um, employment, community, uh, be with us, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to bless this church, bless the church family and the church leadership, that we may do things according to your will and pleasing to you. We ask that you continue to forgive us for our sins, keep us. These blessings we do ask in your darling son, Jesus' name, amen.
indeed God's name is excellent, isn't it? Uh, thank you to the um, praise team for helping me to preach. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. You know that's a psalm, right? Okay. But do you know that God also decided to make your name excellent? The book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. Verses 1 to 3, where God called Abraham. And he's, one of the promises that God gave to Abraham, one of the promises that God gave to Abraham, I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing to the entire world. <laughs> this morning we've been talking about, well, before we get into this morning, let me take care of some, some matters first. I want to remind you that, well, first of all, I want to give thanks to Pastors Jones and Mota for the privilege that is, be, that is afforded me to speak to you and with you um, today. Secondly, we're getting ready to launch the, relaunch our grief ministry. Um, and in our grief ministry, we have been using a book that I've written, Kingdom Stewardship and Grief. But the next round we're going to be using will be the book of Job. Yeah. <laughs> Holy smoke. I started, I started writing on the book of Job because, we, like I said, I'm going to do it in terms of like a commentary, but we're going to be able to use it for, for grieving. And that book, the Lord is so phenomenal that while I was doing the grief program, I was, my devotion was from the book of Job. I was in the book of Job doing my personal devotions. And uh, looking at it now through the eyes of grief, it is phenomenal. One of the things we're going to do with it also is to see grief in the context of us as a black people. And how we grieve differently to other ethnic groups. Not to other races, because there's only how many races? One. So the other ethnic groups, and we're going to compare it with, like, if you're born in the Caribbean or the West Indies, and you come to America, how does it affect your grieving process? We're going to look at Americans and how it affects, the, how we, we differ in terms of our grieving process. I want to thank those individuals who have been coming out for the last 12 uh, weeks dealing with this concept of grief. Um, you're brave enough to come. The entire church should be there because life is about grief. Um, um, uh, uh, when, when I wrote the book Kingdom Stewardship and Grief, my, my editor says, that's too morbid. Don't say that. And I had it up front. I took her advice and put it further down in the book. I didn't take it out altogether because life is about grief. And so we're going to relaunch again. We're going to do the two services, and then we're going to do a seminar in the afternoon for those who would like to be a part of that, that process. And so thank you very much also for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to minister in the area, um, in the area of grief. This morning we are looking at God created us for success. We were designed by God to succeed. And we looked at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28 what I consider the most important passages of scriptures in the entire word. And like I told him this morning, in, in, in first it was 2 Peter chapter 1, but now I've gone to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. And we find in there that there are four areas that God has laid the foundation for us so that we can be successful. You, you know the passage of scripture, don't you? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the... Birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anybody who was not here this morning, from that, from that, name four things that God has given so that we can be successful. Anybody? Uh, somebody who was not here. Eh? Life. What's that? Health. No, in the passage, Genesis one twenty six to twenty eight. There are more than four, but I found four. You, you can find more than that. But the first one is, and God said, let us make man in our image. 
The mere fact that we're made in the image of God means that we are just like God. Right? You're like your parents, aren't you? And then the second one is, let them have dominion. What does dominion mean? Power, rulership, authority. So God has given you rulership, he has given you power, he has given you authority. But what is the, what is the, um, we're recapping now, we're going to get into, um, um, what's the subject I'm supposed to be speaking about? Okay, so we're going to get to the gifts of success. What is the gift that God has given us so that we can continue being successful? So dominion is given to who? But who on earth experiences dominion? Eh? Oh, you're here this morning. That's where he said it. Kings are given dominion, right? Yeah, okay, well, the Bible says that. I didn't say that. That's what the Bible says. The Bible always associates dominion with kings. And my wife was telling me when I got back there that I, 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 was, I spoke too fast and giving out a text that are associated with that. I don't just want to tell you. I want to tell you where you can find it. But if you look at the book of Psalms, Psalm 145, verse 13. Psalm 145, verse 13, for those of you who are writing. We also can find this concept in um, um, Daniel. Daniel chapter 4, verse 3. Daniel chapter 4, verse 22. Daniel chapter 4, verse 34. If you read also Daniel chapter 6, verse 26. Daniel 7, 14. Daniel 7, 27. And also Micah chapter 4 and verse 8 shows us that dominion is associated with kings and kingdom. So when God created this universe, he created a kingdom for his kings to live. It's the same thing today. If I were to um, build anything for my children, what would I build? House. Because that's where I live. And since I'm made in the image of God... And one of the things that God is, God is a king. Not only a king, but he is king of kings. That's um, Psalm 1916, sorry, Revelation 1916, Revelation 1714, and also 1 Timothy 6 and verse 15. So God is a king, therefore he creates kings. Because you're made in this image, whatever God is, Psalm 1016 or 1610. I get those two mixed up. Psalm 1610 or 1016 tells us that God is a king. Psalm 93 and verse 2 or 3 tells us also that God is king of all the earth. So God created a kingdom, therefore, for Adam and Eve, and he made them kings. How do we know he made them kings? Because dominion is associated with kings. But not only that, Revelation chapter 1, 5 and 6 tells us that we are kings. And what is interesting about Revelation 1, uh, 5 and 6 and Revelation 5, 9 and 10 is that the tense that is used there is past tense. It is not future tense. Read it, read it, read it, read it carefully. And those of you who are, who are not here, you could get the, the, the DVD and be able to, to, to follow up. But in addition to, to being created in the image of God, giving us dominion, he also made us kings. And finally, he said to us, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Replenish actually means in that context is to fill the earth. Because when God created, when God created Adam and Eve and he created the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden was not over all the world. You know that, right? Because Genesis 2, 23 and 24 tells us that God drove them out of the garden. So when God told them to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, what he's telling them is, I want you to take Eden to the rest of the world. See, <laughs> you're made in the image of God. And if you're made in the image of God, you're imitators of God. So whatever God does, he wants you to do. Eh? Yes. Just in the same way you make children and you want children to follow in your footsteps. Isn't that true? It's sounding like I'm a foreigner. Eh? You can't answer? <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Your nieces and nephews, though. 
you want to mold them into your image. So be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. What God is saying to us, whatever I have given to you, that's not restricted to children. Because like I said this morning, when you read um, um, Genesis chapter 6, when God's after the flood, God said to Noah, be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth. And as far as we know, Noah did not have any more children. So he was not talking about just children. Whatever it is that God gives you, you want to be fruitful in it, you want to multiply it, and you want to fill the earth with it. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. That's why drug dealers, what do you think drug dealers want to do? They want to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. And so it doesn't matter whether it's negative or positive. The principles that God gives, the principles that God gives, they can be used positively or they can be used negatively. And it doesn't matter how you use them, you're going to be successful. From man's standpoint, not from God's. You got to do it God's way in order to be successful according to God. And God's success and the world's success are two different successes. And so you want to be on God's side. So God has made us to be fruitful, to multiply, and to fill the earth. So whatever it is you have, when you run a business, you want to be fruitful, you want to multiply, even on your job. Whatever resources you have, you always want to be fruitful because not only that, those words, being fruitful, multiplying, and filling the earth are associated with kings. Kings always want to do that. That's why they're conquering. They always want to conquer. They always want to expand their kingdom. And so it's a part of who we are. So God designed us for success and he has equipped us with the abilities to be successful. In our scripture reading, you'll notice that there are some, some, some successes that we can, we already are given once we have accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. He says, number one, you're chosen. I have chosen you. I have predestinated you. I've adopted you. And if you go to um, 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 Romans, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, you'll see there that God not only has chosen us, he has not only has, has adopted us, he has not only blessed us. The first one is blessed. He has blessed us. If you are blessed, it means you are successful, right? Because being blessed and success are one and the same. So he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings where? In heavenly places. Do you realize that in order for you to get your blessings, you got to go up to get them and come back down? Because where are they? In heavenly places. So you're blessed, you're chosen, you're predestinated, you're adopted. If you read um, Romans chapter 8 and verse 30, you're also justified. You're also glorified. Not only that, you're already translated. Yeah, those are easy to grasp. Let's, let's look at Colossians, the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. Colossians 1 and verse 13. See, you're made in the image of God. You're like God. Therefore, it means you are successful. Well, well let me back up. Was God successful or is God successful? Is God victorious? Well, if he is and you're made in this image, therefore you are. <laughs> okay. What does Colossians 1 and verse 13 says? Who hath from the power of darkness and hath done what? In order for you to understand the success that God has given to you, you've got to understand that that success has already taken place. Things happen in the spiritual realm before they happen in the physical. So when it's happening in the physical, it means it's already done. Who have delivered us? past tense, 
from the power of darkness and hath done what? Is that we're going to be translated or are we already translated? Already translated. You've got to therefore see yourself as being successful because God has called you to success. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we, just, we just finished talking about how excellent is your name in all the earth. And we only, because God is excellent, and because God is great, he therefore has made us excellent, he has made us great. Now he's going to do it, it's already done. How is it already done? How, how is it that God has, has equipped us so that we can be successful? What is the gift that God has given to us so that we, we can walk in success? We can walk in an excellence. We can walk the way God wants us to walk. What do you think is the greatest gift that God has given to us? One of the greatest gifts. Eternal life. Did I hear something here? Somebody just, somebody just said it. Jesus! Remember, when God created this universe, when God created this kingdom for Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve sold the kingdom out to the devil. You know that's the worst real estate deal that ever took place. And so the first Adam failed. So God gave us another chance because Adam was supposed to show us and when I say Adam, I'm talking about mankind. I'm talking about Adam and Eve as well. Because if you read Genesis chapter 5, you'll discover that God called them Adam. Both of them. And that's why we need to stop this foolishness about seeing women as less than men. Not in God's economy. As a matter of fact, when Jesus came, thank God for Jesus. When Jesus came, he flipped that script. I don't we have time to get into that. Come to the class, let me tell you. But here's what happened. Adam failed, and so what did God do? First Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's read verses um, 43 to 46. First Corinthians 15, 43 to 46. King James, preferably. First Kings? Sorry. What did I say? First Corinthians First Corinthians 15. 43 to 46. All right? The Bible says, It is sown in dishonor. It is raised. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Verse 44. It is sown in the natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. This is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written. Uh -huh. The first Adam was made a, and the last Adam was made a, verse 46. How be it? That was not the first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spiritual. Go back to verse 45. So when, God, when Adam failed, what God did was that he sent his son as the last Adam to show us how the first Adam should have lived. And because he failed, God gave us the gift of Jesus Christ so that we can know now how to live and to live victoriously. But the only way you can live victoriously is to live spiritually. Live according to the spiritual Adam, not the physical Adam. The reason why we fail to succeed in our walk with God is because our focus becomes the physical rather than the spiritual. And in the spiritual, it's already done. The physical is just catching up. And so lots of time you're behind the eighth ball. And that's why we are not successful. Because we're looking at it from man's standpoint. We're looking at it from our circumstances and not understanding that there's someone who's in charge of our circumstances and has already taken care of it. So, the first Adam was made a living soul 
and the last Adam. There are a lot of preachers who tell you the second Adam. There's no second Adam. If there's a second Adam, then there's going to be a third. There's going to be a fourth. But he says the last Adam. Nahum 1 in verse 9, sin is not going to rise up a second time. So there's no need for another Adam. But God in his love, God in his grace gave us another Adam. He gave us the last Adam in the form of Jesus to show us now how we should live. And what is fascinating about this, this, this Adam is that this Adam, this last Adam was just like the first Adam. The difference was the last Adam didn't sin. But he was made just like the first Adam. As a matter of fact, he was made different. He was made lower than the first Adam. He came after 4,000 years of sin. Adam was created in a perfect environment. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we are made just like Jesus. We were made just like Jesus. That's why we can be successful. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you heard me right. I know you have difficulty accepting it, so I need to show you from the word of God that we are. That's the reason why we can be successful. And so Jesus, how was Jesus born? Of a woman. The book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 4. Let's look at Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Let's look at verse 4. You can read the pre preceding and the verses after. I don't like just to read one passage. It does seem to be eisegeting the text. That's why I prefer to read it in its context. But because of the time factor, you could read it when you go home and, and get the context. But let, let's go quickly because we have, we, have, we have a lot of ground to cover. Galatians 4 and verse 4 says what? But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a... Oops, there it is. So Jesus was born of a woman. By the way, you men who think you're better than women, do you realize that the, 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 the male species didn't have anything to do with Jesus' birth? We ain't had a thing to do with it, bro. Sorry. Only the Holy Spirit and Mary. The female. Because what God wants to do is restore what was in Genesis chapter 1. Here's a, here's a kingdom principle you need to understand. Anytime you want to understand what is God's will for man, what is God's plan for man, read Genesis 1 and 2. Anything you find after that must fit into Genesis 1 and 2. If it doesn't, it means it's cultural. How is God going to accomplish it? Read Revelation 21 and 22. Too many of us live in Genesis 3 to Revelation chapter 20. And we take everything from in there and we don't take it from Genesis 1 and 2. Because Genesis 1 and 2 lays the foundation for what was God's plan for man. So here... Adam failed, and so God now created another Adam, the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ, and he was born of a woman. Uh, um, John, John chapter 1 tells us, in the beginning was the, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the, the same was in the beginning. And verse 14 tells us, verse 14, uh, um, John 1, 14 says, that the word became flesh, and dwell among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. So Jesus came in the flesh. Jesus was born like you and I were born. Yeah. Let me try another one here for the ladies. How did the first woman was born? She came out of a man. How are you born? Come out of a woman. See, because God is always about balance. Yeah, 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 
That always balances out. It always balances out. So stop trying to be who you're not. And stop trying to tell other people who they're not. And so 1 Corinthians, by the way, you can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 11 and 12, that we are now born of a woman. So God was born, Jesus was born of a woman, we were born of a woman because we're just like Jesus. Jesus was also made in the image of God. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says what? Second Corinthians, sorry, Galatians 4, 4, I apologize. Galatians 4, 4. No, no, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians, it's second Corinthians. Galatians 4, 4, we just read. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians 4 and verse 4. Thank you. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the... We, in, 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 in Colossians, let's go to Colossians. So that's not the only place you can find it. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, let's begin from verse um, 13. Colossians 1, 13... Uh, let's go a little higher. Let's go 12. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints, verse 13. Who hath delivered us? We just finished reading, reading that. Let's go to verse 14. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sin, verse 15. Who is there? Who is there? So Jesus was made in the, how are you and I made? Image of God. Look at this one, look at this one. Not only were we made in the image of God, but God has given us the ability to make others in our image. Genesis, Genesis 5, Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 and 3, 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 5, Genesis 5, 1 to 3. Genesis 5, 1 to 3 says what? This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. him. So we were made in the image of God. We are made in the likeness of God. Verse 2 says, Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name in whom, sorry, in the day in which they, when they were created. Verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his, after his own, and called his name Seth. So Jesus made us in his image. Right? Anybody has a dispute with that? John 1 tells us he created. Colossians 1 tells us there was nothing made that was made that Jesus didn't make. So Jesus made us as well and he made us in his image. But now, not only are we made in his image, we now can create children in our own image. In our own likeness. That's what Adam did. See, anything that God is successful in, he gives us the opportunity to do it as well so we can be successful in it. Do you realize, because you're a king, and you're made a king, kings and kingdoms are always associated with what? Royalty. But what else? Power. What else? Authority. What else? What does that bring with it? What does that bring with it? Success. That brings with it success. So the mere fact that you're a king means that you're successful. The mere fact that you recognize you're living in a kingdom means you are successful. Most kings, the majority of kings, and we're not talking, okay, let's, let's, let's forget about the, the, the earthly kings. Most earthly kings are successful. 
if you are a king of the king of kings, you are successful. You will never not be successful. And so we are made just like Jesus because God wants us to be successful. That's another area that God, that, that Jesus was, that Jesus did, that makes us also successful. How did Jesus live his life? How did Jesus live his life? Depending upon who? Yeah, he was obedient to his parents, which is very important. Thank you for that. So, children, be obedient to your parents. For this is the will of God. If they are in God's will. You're only obedient to them if they are in God's will. He said again, you're only obedient to them if you're in God's will. But be prepared for the consequences if you're not. Because they want you to be obedient to them no matter what. So, yes, his parents. Who else does God rely on in order to be successful? God, the Father. You know, we, we, always, we always do that when it comes to the Father. We always run to the Father, which is a good thing. But sometimes you forget the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Do you realize that Jesus was also dependent on the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 verse 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Why? Because the Spirit is the one who anointed me to preach the gospel. So Jesus relied on the Spirit. We always hear about his Father, and that is true. Luke chapter 12, verses 49 and 50, tells us that Jesus didn't say a word unless that word came from his Father. But we tend to forget that the Spirit also is the one that led in his life. So the Spirit of God is upon me. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1 tells us that the Spirit was the one that led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I, I like Luke chapter 4 and verse 1 because Luke chapter 4 and verse 1 says that, 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 that he was filled with the Spirit and the same Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So who should you and I rely on today? The Spirit, the Father, and the Spirit. Because we are made just like Jesus. There's so many other areas, as a matter of fact, I've come up with about 20 of them, where we are made just like Jesus. And one of the reasons why God has done that is so that we could understand because the last Adam, because Jesus, the gift that was given to us, was successful, you too can be successful. You were designed for success. You were designed for greatness. You were designed with power. You were designed with authority. But you've got to recognize where that power and authority comes from. You've got to recognize that it's in him we live and move and have our being. He says in, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, According to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness. As a matter of fact, he says in, in, uh, Paul says in, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 37 that you are not only conquerors, but you are more than conquerors. So you're conquering conqueror. Yeah. But why, why did God say, why, why, why wasn't conquering enough that you're a conqueror? Because if you conquer, that's enough. Isn't that true? Once you conquer, everything is over. But why did he say more than a conqueror? Why did he say more? Why did he call us more than conquerors? Eh? Come on, don't be afraid. We are overcomers. Anybody else? Why did God say to us? See, God really wants us to be successful. Success, okay? Eh? At all times, okay? Anybody else? 
But if you conquer, it means you're conquering. If you're a conqueror, it means you're conquering all the time, isn't it? Here's what the Spirit revealed to me. That not only does God want us to conquer, but he wants to help us to help others and show others how to conquer. See? Again, you're made in the image of God. Again, we are made just like Jesus. So Jesus was not just concerned about him being successful. He's also concerned about others being successful. So when we begin to understand this concept of conquering, you know what we're going to do? We're going to help other individuals to show them how to go about conquering. Yeah, how to become overcomers. How to, to, to be more than just a conqueror. And so as you recognize who this God is that we are serving, when you begin to recognize what he has equipped you with, because everything he says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, everything that you need to live godly has already been given to you. You don't have to go looking for it. It's already there. But here is the secret. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 says, According to his divine power hath given to us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through a knowledge of him who hath called us to glory and virtue. So you conquer, the way you conquer then is by knowing. The way you conquer then is by knowing Jesus Christ himself. As a matter of fact, if you read verse 2, verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiply unto you. How? Through a knowledge. And of Jesus, <laughs> let, me, let me just say this before I shut up. See, that's the best way. That's the best way to put it. There are too many of us that are praying prayers that should not be prayed. There are too many of us that are asking God for stuff he already gave us. And so one of the things that we tend to pray for, Lord, give me more faith. God says, I already gave you faith. Give me more patience, but I already gave you patience. If you have the Holy Spirit living in you, then you have faith. Then you have joy. Then you have peace. You have the fruit of the Spirit in you. So you don't have to ask for more of what you already have. What do you do when your children ask you for more food and they didn't eat the food they gave you? What do you tell them? Finish that first. So you're not going to give them until they finish. It's the same thing with God. Why are you asking God for more faith when you have the faith that he has already given you? Remember he said, if you have faith as large as a... So all you need is a mustard seed. Plant it, let it grow. How do we multiply then that which he has given to us? And 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 tells us, grace and peace be through our... So if you want to multiply your faith, what do you do? Get to know God. If you want to multiply the joy you have in your life, get to know God. If you want to multiply long-suffering in your life, if you want to multiply patience in your life, it's all about the knowledge of God. So the more, so here's what happens. Here's what happens. When you begin to get to know this God that you love and that you want to serve, the more you get to know him, because he is love, grace, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, those things in your life begin to multiply. A lot of us want to live this Christian life and take shortcuts. And so we don't pick up the word and read the word. For some of us, that's one of the reasons why when I give scripture readings, most of them are long. Because for some of you, that's all you're going to read for the week. So at least you get something. 
But the more you get to know this God, the more you begin to understand this God, the more you have a desire. He says, if you search with me with all your heart diligently, you're going to find me. Not only are you going to find me, but you're going to, you're going to find everything you need to succeed. He has already made the provision for our success. Let's walk in it. For those of you who don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, and you want to get to know this God so you can understand that you have power, you have authority, that you're made in his image, that you have dominion, that whatever he has given you is for you to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth with it. But you have not accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior. You want to increase your faith. You want, you want to multiply your faith. You want to multiply your joy and your peace and your long suffering. But you can't do it without a knowledge of God. If you don't know Christ, so heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you don't know God as your personal Lord and Savior, this is the chance and the opportunity for you now to walk in the success that God has given you. If you don't know him and you would like to know him, just raise your hands where you are. If you even have a personal encounter with God, you have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, now is the chance, now is the opportunity so you can experience what God has specifically in store for you. Because you are unique to God. Your success is not anybody else's success. Your success is designed specifically by God for you. And you want to experience this, just raise your hands. And now, Heavenly Father, thank you for create, create, creating us as your children to be successful. Thank you for making all the provisions necessary so that we can be. And now, dear Lord, as we leave this place, may we indeed be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth with whatever you have given to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you have been encouraged by the word this morning? In Christ, you can be successful. Everything you need is found in him. Thank you, Pastor Vanderpool. I've been, my knowledge has been enriched this morning, and we've been encouraged to just get to know Christ a little bit more, because when he comes back, we want to be known by him, and he wants to know us too. Praise God. At this time, we would like for the deacons to come forward to help us with the morning's tithes and offerings. Congregation, do you believe in the promises of God? Yes. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10 says that we should honor the Lord with our possessions and with the first fruits of all our increase. And here's the promise so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Spirit of Prophecy tells us that the system of tithes and offerings was intended to impress the minds of men with a great truth. And here is the truth, just like we heard in the Word today, that God is the source of every blessing to his creatures. And that to him, man's gratitude is due for the good gifts of his providence. So now is the time that we have to show that we are grateful to God for all of his blessings as we honor the Lord with the first fruits. So may God bless you as we exercise faithfulness and obedience in returning to God what is his today and in blessing the storehouse with your love offerings. Jehovah, you I trust. I trust. 
trust in you. In you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Jehovah, you. I trust. I trust in you. In you. Say, I believe. I believe. I believe you. I trust. I trust in you. In We just want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to return to you that which you have given, a portion of what you have given to us. Father, we pray a blessing over the tithes and the offerings. We pray that you will continue, Lord, to help us to have a spirit of thanksgiving. Thanks for all that you've done for us. Thanks for dying for us. Thanks for just taking us through from day to day, Lord. May we live with a heart of gratitude towards you. 
for all that you've done, all that you are doing right now, and all that you are about to do for us. We bless you now in the wonderful, excellent name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, we would like to know, are there any special guests among us? Are you visiting with the Fondren family for the first time? Would you just please raise your hand? Anybody visiting for the first time? Anyone at all, young or old? Raise that hand. Maybe I can't see. Praise God for you. Amen. Amen. We want you to know that we welcome you today, and you have embellished our service just by being here. And we want you to know that we do have a special gift for you. So the person that is sitting next to you is going to escort you to our VIP room because we are just especially excited that you're here today. Please, please come again. And if you don't have a church home, and if anyone else is hiding that didn't raise their hand, if you don't have a church home, Pastor Moda and Pastor uh, Jones would love to be your pastor. Blessings on you, and please, please come again. At this time, we will stand, stay tuned for our morning announcements. Happy New Year and Happy Sabbath, Saints. Here are today's announcements. Join us for our elder ordination taking place during the 1115 service on Saturday, January 25th. Join us after the ordination service for a reception to congratulate our newly ordained elders. Financial Peace University Winter Session continues on Thursday, January 23rd. There is still time to register. Please see the monitors in the church foyer to scan the QR codes or visit the Members Resources tab on the church website at www.fondernsdachurch.org. The hospitality team is looking for additional members to join their team. If you are interested in joining the hospitality team, please contact Tiffany Smith at 832-588-7225. Fondren Pastoral Care continues to offer participation in its grief ministry support group facilitated by Pastor Kennedy Vanderpool. Sessions continue to meet each Friday evening and Sunday afternoons in January. If you would like to receive information about all the ministry events at Fondren, join our one list to receive up-to-date information about church events and other information. Send an email to FondrenSW-subscribe at yahoogroups.com with your full name and a request to join our one list. This concludes today's announcements. For more information regarding today's announcements and other Fondren ministry events, please review the monitors in the church for you or visit the website at www.fondrensdachurch.org. We want to wish you a happy, blessed, and prosperous new year and look forward to you worshiping together with us here at Founder and Seventh-day Adventist Church where the sun, S-O-N, always shines. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you please stand for the benediction as we depart from this place but never from the Lord's presence? May the Lord bless and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious upon you and lift up his countenance upon you now and forevermore. Be at peace as you serve the living God. Amen. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. No matter what your friends may say. Jehovah has the final say And who has 
Yeah. 